In this video, we're learning about gravity. So we'll cover what gravity is, how to calculate weight, and finally, what gravitational potential energy is. Let's start with what gravity is. You can think of gravity as a force of attraction between two objects. And the size of that force depends on two factors, namely the mass of those two objects, and how far apart those objects are. And remember, the term mass here just means the amount of matter in an object. So for objects that have a small mass, like apples, or even buildings, the gravitational force of attraction is so tiny, it's as though it doesn't even exist. And the same goes for huge objects, like Jupiter, that have a really large mass, but are far away. For example, the gravitational force of attraction is still tiny between this building on Earth and the planet Jupiter, even though the planet is huge, because it's just so far away. However, for very large objects that are also relatively close by, such as the Earth or the Moon, gravity is felt far more strongly and can have a big influence over nearby objects. We call this field of influence around an object its gravitational field, and the strength of this field is called the gravitational field strength, which we show with the letter G. For Earth, this is around 9.8 newtons per kilo, sometimes rounded up to 10, while for the Moon, it's just 1.6, because the Moon is a lot smaller than the Earth, so it has a weaker gravitational field. The forces of gravity between the Sun and the Earth are also really strong, even though they're quite far away from each other. This is because the Sun is so enormous that its gravitational field strength is around 274 newtons per kilo. Next, let's see how to calculate weight. Whenever an object comes into a gravitational field, it experiences a force of attraction. And in physics, it's this force that's an object's weight. So we can define weight as the force exerted on an object due to gravity. And it depends on both the mass of the object and the gravitational pull acting on it. So to calculate an object's weight, we take its mass and multiply it by the gravitational field strength, which will tell us exactly what the force of attraction is. For example, if a person with a mass of 60 kilograms was on Earth's surface, their weight, the force pulling them downwards towards the center of the Earth, would be 60 times 9.8, so 588 newtons. Importantly, an object's mass is the same everywhere, but because gravitational field strength changes depending on which different planet or star it's on, its weight changes depending on where it is. For instance, say this person was on the moon instead of on the Earth. While their mass would still be 60 kilograms, as the gravitational field strength on the moon is only 1.6, their weight would only be 60 times 1.6, so just 96 newtons. Now, you've probably noticed that this isn't how we talk about mass and weight in real life. Normally, we'd say that we weigh 60 kilograms not that we have a mass of 60 kilograms. This is just one of those times where the technical physics terms are different to everyday language. And you basically just need to be aware of the difference and know that in physics, weight and mass are different things, with mass being a property of an object, while weight is the force acting on it in a gravitational field. Finally, let's look at what gravitational potential energy is. Now, to lift an object up and overcome the forces of gravity is going to require energy or work. And this energy that we use will be transferred to the object's gravitational potential energy store. The formula for gravitational potential energy, which can be written as E with a little p, is simply Ep equals mgh or mass times gravitational field strength times height. 
with the units being in kilograms, newtons per kilogram, and meters. And as gravitational potential energy is a form of energy, it's measured in joules. Let's do a quick work example using this formula to see how it works. An apple with a mass of 100 grams is thrown 3 meters up into the air. What is its gravitational potential energy? Well, first, we need to grab our equation and make sure all the values are in the right units. So we need to convert the 100 grams into kilograms by dividing it by 1,000, because there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, which gives us 0.1 kilos. Then all we need to do is plug in the values. So our calculation becomes the mass of 0.1 times the gravitational field strength of 9.8 times the height of 3. And this gives us 2.94 joules. So the apple gained 2.94 joules of gravitational potential energy. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.